welcome to this super special awesome build guide at around about a $750 budget. This video is going to be a really interesting one to film, not only because we're going to show you all of the build process, the benchmarks and how this thing performs, but because it's currently the hottest day of the year. Again, we're talking around about 35, 36 degrees outside, but I've got all of the windows closed because there are children next door having a little tea party. I'm going to roast. That camera is probably going to turn off because of overheating. And that means we're going to have to get another one of these bad boys. And the only way we're going to do that is by talking about our sponsor, Gigabytes, and their awesome Waterforce Z490 motherboard. This exceptional motherboard is the water cooler's dream. With a full cover block that not only keeps your components cool, but looks stunning in the process. And with support for Intel's latest 10th generation processors, Thunderbolt 3, 10 gig Ethernet and Wi-Fi AX, there is nothing stopping you from complete PC domination. Learn more and level up your water cooling today with the link down below. To kick off this build then, we're going to start by talking about the motherboard. And this is rather confusingly named a B460 motherboard which is like the equivalent, if you like, of the B450 chipset from the whole AMD ecosystem, except it's Intel's version. Confusing, I know. This is a bit of a higher end one. It's still around about 120 pounds, so we're still very much in budget motherboard territory. This one is MSI's Mag B460 Tomahawk. It's a full size board, it looks very good, and although it is a more budget orientated motherboard, it's still fully loaded, packed with features, and I don't think most people would notice that much difference. But I think that for the target audience, it doesn't really matter if you losing out on a few features that most people won't use anyway that's more of a high-end luxury that you're gonna get by spending more money interestingly the chip that we've paired it with though doesn't support overclocking anyway so that doesn't matter this is the core a310 320 but because of availability and the fact that this is brand new this is actually a little bit overpriced at the time of filming and I know that this will drop down but this is a four core processor eight threads it's pretty equivalent really to the 3300X from Ryzen. They're gonna trade blows, you're not gonna see too much difference really in terms of performance. So it more comes down to the features that you want from the motherboard and the price of the chip and the motherboard at the time of purchase. In terms of the graphics card that we're using though, always the most exciting bit for me with a gaming PC build, this is AMD's 5500 XT. It is the Pulse Edition by Sapphire. And it's not the best thing to look at in the world, but this thing chugs along like nobody's business and gives you great price to performance. So if you want to play the latest titles, you want to be able to do it in style, turn a lot of the settings up if you're playing at 1080p, then this is definitely a strong contender for your next graphics card. Normal sort of games, the latest things that come out, you're probably looking around about high settings, anywhere between 40 and 100 frames a second, depending on the title. But we'll explore all of this a little bit later in full detail in the benchmarks. The power supply that we're using is Corsair's CV450. 450 watts should be more than enough for this particular build, but if you are going to want to upgrade it, maybe in a year or two, it's worth spending a little bit extra now so you don't have to change it out later. But all of the cables in this are actually jet black. There's no ketchup and mustard here, which is something that can't be said for a lot of budget oriented power supplies. What else have we got on this table? What else have we got? We have an SSD. This is the BX500. And as people quite rightly pointed out before, there's not that much difference between this and the MX500, but this changes all of the time. MX500 is a slightly better. There it goes. We've lost the camera. I told you this was gonna happen. We've got a man down, ladies and gentlemen. F's in the chat. You could actually put an F in the chat if you want. I'll respect that. I know you've watched the video. Leave it down below. Go on, I dare you. Going back to a little bit more serious PC-centric mode for a second, an SSD is an essential part of any PC, whether it's for gaming or not. This one is a little bit too small, it's 240 gigabytes. I've priced this up for a 500 gigabyte version of this. Now these two components are a little bit weird. This is the Vengeance LPX. This is some of the best value memory you can get that's widely available. I'd recommend that you get a 16 gigabyte kit, so two times eight, because it's not really any more expensive these days. It's actually quite hard to buy a kit of eight gigabytes, and it is gonna make a fairly big difference in quite a few games. And if you do wanna have things like Discord, Google Chrome open while you're playing games, 16 gig is gonna allow you to do that a lot more comfortably and does come recommended. Then the final piece of the puzzle is by no means essential. As you can see, I didn't get a cooler with my Intel review sample, but you will when you buy your chip. So you can just use the stock cooler in the box. 
But if you do want to go for something that's a lot more silent, then you can grab this, it's the Pure Rock 2. But as you're not going to be overclocking, you don't really need to worry about thermals at all, to be honest, unless maybe it's a day like today. But that is going to get very loud for the stock caller, whereas something like the Pure Rock 2 is going to be a whole lot quieter and will look very good in your system as well. This is the black version, but you can save yourself a little bit of money and get the more silvery one if you prefer. We have camera 2, ladies and gentlemen. It's back, but for how long? Probably not long enough. So let's crack on with this build. And I know I'm incredibly boring, aren't I? But in case you've never watched a PC-centric video before, what have you been doing your whole life? The first thing you need to do is grab the motherboard out of the box and then actually put it straight on top. You will also need a SATA cable as well from the box. So take that out now. I do get a lot of comments actually from new builders asking me whether I'm wearing any form of anti-static wrist strap or anything. And truth be told, I did the first few times I built a PC, but I haven't done since and I've never run into any issues with static. To give you a quick walkthrough of this board, this is where our CPU is going to go here. We can just raise this little lever and then we plop the CPU into place. This is where all of our RAM goes. You can see we have four slots in this motherboard. M.2 is where the NVMe SSD would go if you're putting one in, but we're not doing that today. The top slot where we have this little steel armor is where our graphics card is gonna go. We've got SATA ports and things over this side. This is where the SSD will connect to. And then right down at the bottom, this is where our case connects to for things like the on off switch. And then we have little fan headers and things down the bottom. To install our CPU, we have this little lever that you need to lift up. Don't worry about taking that cover off. It will come off automatically. Then just grab your processor, line it up so that the gold indicator actually matches the indicator on the motherboard. And then with absolutely no force whatsoever, gently lower it down into place you want to use the RAM slot furthest away from you and then not the one next to it, but the one after that. And there's only one right way of putting memory in. You just line up the notches and then push it down until it clicks into place. The cooler is unlikely to cause you any real problems. If you're using the Intel stock one, it's actually a little bit easier to install than some of these larger ones. You will need to apply some form of thermal paste if there isn't some already attached to your cooler, but chances are at this level, unless you're using a used one, probably got some pre-applied like this one is here but it's available very cheaply if you need to grab some. This bit is a tiny bit fiddly but just grab this back plate and feed it through. As I say a little bit fiddly as you can hear. That's why you use the spaces that come in the box and that's why if you read the instructions you won't look like a fall on camera. Trying that again grab the back plate a lot less fiddly this time and then just feed those screws through so they pop through. This video could have been three seconds. It's like, here are the components, links down below, um, read the instructions. Maybe show a shot of some RGB. Everyone's applauding. Video of the century, trending number one UK, done. Sign, sealed, delivered, I'm yours. Dun, 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 hey. It is all warm in here, ladies and gentlemen. It is warm. W-A-W-R-M, warm. Once that's done though, you can then grab your cooler. Make sure Be Quiet is actually facing upwards. You've got thermal paste applied if it doesn't come ready to go. Lower this down so that it just sits nice and neatly. Tell you what, that was probably the easiest big CPU cooler I've ever installed. Not just saying that, fair play to be quiet. That was ridiculously easy. You do only get one fan included in the box, but you do get an additional bracket if you do decide to grab another at a later date. But for this CPU, I really don't see why you'd need to. Just don't forget to plug that fan in. And there you go then, we have our CPU installed, cooler installed, RAM, Pretty much most of a computer is here. We just need to get this inside the case. Graphics cards, storage, get it all plugged in. If you think PC case, this is probably about as, I don't know, computer case as you could get. It is a black box with a window that is tempered glass, so it doesn't cheap out entirely, but there's not that much else going on with it. You can get a version of this that has RGB on the front. That would be the 175R, but this one is the 110, is it 110R? Yep, 110R, my memory is great today. Too busy uh, singing Stevie Wonder. My uh, brain cells have, have been replaced with frankly something much more important. We love old Stevie. Maybe I should do a PC build with him. 
that would be amazing, come on. Your little bag of goodies will be in the hard drive cage round the back. So this is what you need for things like screws and things. Lay your case down flat. Insert an IO shield if your motherboard doesn't have one pre-applied like we have here. But otherwise just grab your motherboard and slide this in. But once you've done that, you can then admire your work if you so wish. Once again, this is jet black PC with jet black components. I mean, I think all builds these days, unless it's a white build, sort of kind of looks the same these days. But that's not to take away from how it looks because it's shaping up quite nicely. Grab that SATA cable. SATA, oh my God, I'm American now. $750 PC build and everyone is going to unsubscribe. You tease us all the time. What is it like, governor? How's it going? Now grab one of these SATA data cables that we took out of our motherboard box. Don't use the right angle ones, use the two sort of straight flathead sides. And then feed one through the back of the case into the motherboard chamber. And then just connect this to one of these ports here. The SATA SSD screws in very nice and neatly on this little caddy, which makes it incredibly easy. Mm -hmm. I just made a horrible smell in the room. Apologies if you're watching with smell vision Here's our graphics card then. You can see we have two fans. It actually looks pretty good, actually. You just need to find your little PCIe port that's here, and then unscrew these covers. So you need to take two off for a dual slot card. And then just get your graphics card, line it up, and push it in till it clicks. Easy as that. Just don't forget to screw it back into place or you might have a walkabout graphics card. Which quite conveniently leaves us then with the power supply. Because this isn't modular, you can see all of the cables come attached, but on something that's only 450 watts, you don't really get that many cables anyway. So to be honest, it's not a huge concern. But you just slide this into place and screw it from the back. And then that just leaves plugging in cables, really. You've still got all of the ones for the case, and then you've got these power connections as well. That is actually our system done. And I just want to point out how clean this cable management is without doing a single thing. Because we've got not really many fans, we've got two, they're not RGB, there's no splitters, nothing complicated. You can see that you don't actually need a single cable tie, you can just shut this as is to be honest, and you can still access everything. It's not like I've stuffed all of these cables in a bad place, everything's accessible. So if you want to do some upgrades in the future, very easy to do so. Looks pretty good when off as well, but I'm sure once we get this thing turned on, it will look even better. So let's do just that. There we go, CPU or memory changed. Please press F1 to enter the setup. And we should now see in this particular PC, 32 gigabytes of RAM, but of course in your one you should have 16 if you're following along at home. While it's definitely not essential to make any changes in the BIOS at this stage, it's worth having a little look around, familiarizing yourself with how it all works. I'm gonna manually set this speed to 3000. Then I'm gonna install Windows, get the games loaded, and go from there. So here we are then. It's a new day, and we're jumping straight into Apex Legends. Although this is an ultra-wide monitor, we're playing at 1440p here, so do ignore the stretching. And we're getting a very, very playable game. In fact, this is actually running well over 60 frames a second. We're currently getting around about 85 at the time of filming. CPU utilization is sitting around about 30%, so no issues with that i3 whatsoever. Jumping into something a little bit more Civilized, we have Sid Meier's Civilization 6. And I always like to show this one for budget rigs because we're getting at around about the 60 FPS average mark here. And this is at 3440 by 1440, a resolution that this PC is definitely not designed for. So the point is there's loads of headroom here, so it doesn't really matter what resolution you want to play Civ at, you could do it with this. Jumping into everybody's favorite battle royale game, Fortnite, and yes, I know that is gonna rile people up the wrong way, that was sort of the joke, but it's not funny because I'm being shot at. Oh, and there's people here, there's people here. We're getting around about 100 frames a second on average, that's what you need to know. This is 1440p, I believe it's high settings. Come on, can I survive? Oh God, there's people everywhere, people everywhere, he's in a car! I didn't know they had cars in this game. This is how much I play it. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh dear. Oh no. <laughs> you could use this time to reflect on exactly what went wrong there 
or I could instead point out that we're currently utilizing around about 8.1 gigabytes of RAM, which is why I always recommend grabbing 16 as it's so cheap these days, as it does make a decent difference, and if you are wanting to have something like Discord open, as well as Google Chrome, as I mentioned in the intro, you're gonna actually have the memory to do that. Let's jump straight into 1080p though, and look at that, 140, 150 frames a second. Like, oh, there's a guy, 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 and I've not hit him once, that is just abysmal. Saving the most demanding till last, and this is definitely not the smoothest I've seen Planet Zoo. I think you're going to have to turn the settings right down really to properly get the most out of this game. I think we're currently getting around about 30 frames a second here at 1440, but there is definitely a little bit of stutter as we're moving around. Turning the settings down to 1080p and we definitely are getting a much smoother game. We're getting a little bit of stutter, but I've realized that this is just because there is some sort of clash going on with the recording. We are getting around about the 40 frames a second mark here at 1080p. So if you turn some of the settings down, I think you'd be able to get a very playable 60 frames a second from this. And just to prove that it is the recording that was causing that horrible stutter, you can see we're moving around very quickly now and we're still maintaining 35 to 40 frames a second but this time without any of that horrible stutter because I know what you guys are like you're gonna be like he's lying he's saying it's the recording but he's not he's a liar let me know your thoughts down in that comment section below I really love the whole jet black stealthy look there's not any RGB here really a tiny bit on the motherboard but that I don't know, it just makes it look a little bit more authentic in some ways. It's all about the performance rather than paying for things that you're not going to use. But I'm really pleased actually that we have put that Pure Up 2 cooler on the CPU because it makes the world of difference. This is a very, very quiet PC. If you're interested in current pricing or more information on any of the parts featured, you can find them all listed down below, my Amazon affiliate links. And of course, while you're down there, don't forget to check out this video's sponsor. Gigabytes and that awesome Z490 Aorus Water Force motherboard. Equipped with a single monoblock for custom cooling your LGA 1200 socket CPU, all of your SSDs, VRMs and the chipset, you can finally overclock your components to the very limit but without thermals holding you back. Give your custom loop the motherboard it deserves with Gigabytes. Check out the Aorus Z490 Extreme Water Force today with the links down below. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Let me know what sort of build you want to do next. As I say, you can find all the information on the parts listed down below. You team Intel, team Ryzen, let me know. Interested as always, find more builds in the end screen. Like the video, get subscribed, all of that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one.